the track. We're speeding down the track to soaring in the skies. Former KC athlete Javain Atkinson is on the line to show us and to tell us how he left the 110 meter hurdles to take 110 million miles into the sky, becoming a pilot. Good morning to you, Javain. Hey, Javain. Good morning, Mr. Simone. How are you doing? I'm well. It's Simone is fine. <laughs> Nephil is also here. Congratulations <laughs> to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I saw a picture with you yesterday, and really and truly, even as I look at you this morning, the joy coming out of you is palpable. Like, what does this mean for you? Um, it means a lot, to be honest, to you know, achieve this feat. Um, it's been a dream of mine uh, since, I've, since I was a child. You know, I've always wanted to be a pilot, you know, and um, growing up in Jamaica, you know, I never see ways, you know, aviation is sort of dormant. You know, I think, thank God right now, it's sort of getting a little bit prevalent. The ASWI, the um, Aeronautical School of the West Indies, you know, they just launched a couple months ago. You know, so back then I never really had, you know, much motivation or I ne it, it wasn't so much around me, you mm -hmm. know, but I had that that fire that within me. Um, I remember the very first time when I uh, I went to the airport, at the, the, Norman Manley, the Norman Manley International Airport, that is, and um, my stepdad, uh, he went overseas. And that they had a waving gallery at the time, yes, and that was sir. when I got bit. That was when I got bit by the uh, the aviation bug, so to speak. Oh. And then from then, you know, the dream was on me. Yeah. So but why? But why? Why? Right why? No. why? 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 You why? Why? Yeah. I mean, I've always been fascinated with, with airplanes for some strange reasons. As a kid, I remember as a child, many times I'd hear the airplanes over the house, flying over the house, and um, I would just run outside and go look. You know. For just some reason, I've just been fascinated with, with airplanes. And then it, it made sense because when I reached high school, um, I was very strong in like physics and maths. And, you know, you need those, you know, those right, core competencies, correct, those core subjects correct. to be a part. And um, you, it just made sense. You also need help if you get to a certain point and you are not able yep. to um, to afford the education. You're from Humble Beginnings. Pocket Rocket Foundation yep. showed up for you big time, Virgin. Mm -hmm. Definitely, for sure. Uh, yeah. Shout out to, you know, big ups to Shelly Ann, you know, for filling in for me uh, throughout that time. And um, definitely track and field played a, played a part in that. Uh, like I said, um, opportunities were far and few in Jamaica mm -hmm. to get this done. And um, and flying is very expensive. Yes. You know, it's an expensive hobby. It's very expensive to pursue. And um, so I use track and field as a means to propel me, you know, into it. And um, I was grateful that Casey was able to, you know, to turn me into a star stud hurdler, and I was able to obtain a track and field scholarship to um, Liberty University, and um, they were able to cover my tuition and everything, both for my degree and for my flight fee. Casey my did flight that. Fees and, you know, yep. No, uh, my athletic scholarship. Okay. 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 Yeah. Gotcha. Covered every uh, competition, everything. So, it, as like I said, it's very expensive, and um, so I'm grateful that I graduated college and flight school without any debt. Yep. What was the feeling when you had that plane by yourself for the first time? What was that feeling like? Uh, <laughs> I remember my first solo, um, then in 2018, uh, as you break the bonds and you took off. I mean, because most of the time in flight training, you're with your instructor, like 80% mm -hmm. of the time, there's always someone in that right seat, you know, directing you, telling you what to do and assessing you. And so at this time, when it's time for you to solo, you, know, you break the bonds of gravity and you took off when you look in the right seat, you look in the back seat, there's no one behind you, no one beside you. And you're like, man, anything goes wrong, it's up to you. You know, your life is in your own hands right now. And, um, but you know, it just, I remember just during that time, it just speaks to, you know, all the hard work and everything that I put in up to that point. So I just rally back on my training, mm -hmm. you know, just enjoy it, enjoy the views. Mm -hmm. so, so you know are a licensed commercial pilot multi-engine rated does that mean you're you're gone into those big like we could be sitting in a jet blue or a, like a, a caribbean airlines and we could hear hi this is jovain atkinson <laughs> captain uh, speaking yes uh, in essence yes um so being multi-engine rated uh it means that i'm certified to fly an airplane with more than one engine pretty much yeah one of those big fellows yeah i can have you flown one of those big fellows uh, yes, actually, in um, September, I uh, I had my uh, my training done. I had some jet training done because in flight school we mainly train on uh, turbo and uh, prop 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 airplanes. And um, I applied to JetBlue's uh, ATOP program in January, and I got in. And so they brought me in, and um, 
I got some training done on an Airbus A320. Whoa. And um, it was very, very rigorous. Um, yeah, they took us in a couple of days and I had ground school and um, had some time in the simulator. And I get to fly the uh, an Airbus A320. That's actually my dream airplane, you know? So it was a good feeling knowing that I could have, you know, ma- knowing that, you know, I matriculated from um, college and then I just stepped right into the jets and I assimilated very well. You know, all my training, everything just coming full circle. You know, I'm able to apply everything that I've learned in flight school and it was put it to practical use. Fantastic. Yeah. So so where are you now? What are you doing now? Also, uh, right now, I, like I said, I just graduated and uh, I'm currently working on one more rating. I'm training to become a flight instructor right now, actually. Is it? So, I'm going to be teaching how to fly. I'm probably going to be doing that maybe a year, year and a half, just to augment my flight experience a little bit more. And then I'm going to head off um, to the airlines a year and a half from now. How many hours do you need before you can fly a plane load full of people? How many hours you need? Yeah, for? so the minimum is right now to get into the regional airlines in America, you need uh, 1,500 hours by time. But um, if you have a degree or you, if you did all your training at a part 141 school, like I did, um, you're able to go in with a thousand hours. So currently I graduated with like 300 thereabout. Um, so I need roughly 700 more. So I'll be flight instructing, you know, to get those additional hours. Yeah. And then I'll how long will that line. take you? you how long, pardon? Answer? How long will that take you, the 700 hours? Uh, it depends. I would say maybe a year, year and a half. Okay. Depends on how quick you're going to the hours and depending on what you're doing. Because if I'm not flight instructing, I could take up other jobs, maybe like pipeline patrolling or something to build it. But okay. I'm going to be flight instructing. Yeah. Boy, very proud of you. Very, very proud of you. Appreciate um, that. Congratulations on what you've done um, and what you will continue doing um, for yourself and your family. Good but job. fantastic to, to meet you. And I'm really, really great what you've done. Stay safe and God bless you. And thanks for being with us this morning. Thank All you right? very much, guys. Thank you. Bye, Jovain. Yeah. From I Kingston College athlete oh, turned commercial pilot, uh, Javain Atkinson.